Point blank, waist trainers are dangerous. Hey guys, it's Cameron and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing probably my most requested video. My number one asked question all the time is, are waist trainers dangerous? If you have not watched my waist training videos before, I will have that playlist down in the link below. Just get fully educated on everything that I advise with waist training so you can kind of get and understand where I'm coming from in this. I just want to go ahead and put out a disclaimer. I am not like some licensed doctored professional. I mean, we all get the gist. Every YouTuber has to do this because there's just somebody that's going to come in the comments and be like, you pull up all these credentials and whatever I ain't got time for that all I am is a girl's been waist training since she's 15 I'm 20 now I have had five years of doing this I've gone from a medium to a three extra small almost four extra small I have no health issues so I'm well versed I've done the extremes and I've done the not enough and I've done everything in between so I know what I'm talking about anyway so we're gonna get started with this video I will have all of the links for the stuff I got all my information from. If you're interested in waist training, don't do it because somebody said something about your body or you want to look like that person because you think that it's going to make you magically happy. At the end of the day, I always tell people you have to think of it as if tomorrow people started to make fun of you for doing that thing, would you still continue to do it? If the answer is yes, then that means you're on the right track. If the answer is no, that means you're on the wrong track. Enough disclaimer. The number one question that I always get about waist training is, do waist trainers move your organs? This answer has a very yes and no component to it with several experts. What I would say the discrepancy in that would be is that a lot of times in the media, we are mislabeling corsets as waist trainers. Corsets are rigid steel bones that are brought in with some kind of lacing. They're very extreme. They were typically what was used way back in the day. Corsets, yes, they do move your organs, plain and simple. However, waist trainers do not have the power to do that. When you see articles bringing up this statement about um, waist trainers move your organs, they're talking about corsets. If you take a waist trainer and you bend it in half, you'll see how flexible it is. That just doesn't have enough power to literally move your organs around. One of the quotes that I pulled up, it states, he does maintain that there's no real danger of waist trainers causing organs to move around or sustain injury. Any possible shifting of one's internal organs would likely take years of constant wearing to occur. Do not wear your waist trainer for 20 plus hours a day. Do not sleep in it. Y'all don't listen to me. You even message me and DM me and tell me that you're sleeping in it. It is so freaking dangerous. You are just keen on getting fast results. We're millennials, I get it. And this is how y'all end up in the hospital with spine issues. Point blank, waist trainers are dangerous, but only when done not correctly. Kind of like fire, like fire can keep you warm, but if you get too close and touching your hands and all up in that stuff, Obviously, you're gonna get burned. So just don't do those things, and it's not dangerous. Ta-da! Another quote: Tariq Hassan, MD, founder of Southern California Liver and GI Center, also agrees that the pressure from a waist trainer won't damage intestines, and doubts pressure from a waist trainer will negatively affect organs. Compression to the abdominal area is not necessarily equated to compression of the intestines themselves. He says, the waist trainer, when used in conjunction with exercise will help the abdominal muscles form in a shape guided by the belt. So when you have anything compressing like that, your muscles will take the force, protecting your intestines from any pressure. So no, your organs are not moving. So what is moving? Your muscles. However, don't think like, oh, I'm. this is not a big deal. Like, yeah, there's pressure being put on my muscles. Cool, I thought it was my organs. I'm just gonna go extreme. Anything done in extreme can be very damaging. That's why I'm, I'm constantly preaching to you guys about taking this slow it's taken me five years to go from a size medium to a three extra small anything that you try to do overnight is never gonna work out well do not go and squeeze yourself into these tiny little sizes do not wear this for 20 plus hours a day do not work out in it please stop working out in it god if I see one more person posting photos of themselves working out in waist trainers I'm going to literally freak out if you can work out in your waist trainer sis take that damn thing out it ain't even working for you because you should not be able to breathe while exerting energy and working out in a waist trainer that's how I know it ain't working for you so why you even got it on I promise you the slow walk will get you the results that you want. So the next thing that I get asked a lot is 
do waist trainers cause acid reflux? A lot of these things you're gonna see a trend. Most of them are true, but because they are not being done properly. Personally for me, I do not struggle with acid reflux. I never have. I think this is a very personal thing. If you are someone that struggles with acid reflux, you need to not be having your waist trainer on when you're eating. You are putting pressure on your stomach. If you suffer from acid reflux and you're then adding on pressure to your stomach, yes, you are going to get acid reflux. So don't eat with your waist trainer on. Wait like another two or three hours after you've eaten to put it back on. It's one of those like, if, if you have that issue, then you know you need to take those precautions. If you don't, then you don't have to take those precautions. Waist training is very personal and you need to just pay attention to the reaction that you're getting from it. So another thing that I get asked all the time, or I, I get told, waist training isn't permanent. It's a waste of time. Why are you even doing that? That is true. Waist training is not permanent. That's also the great thing about it. You are not doing anything that's permanent to your body. Maintenance is required. I've shown in some videos what it looks like when and I haven't waist trained for a couple of months because if I don't use my waist trainer now, it will actually revert back very quickly. Waist trainers are not a permanent fix. I do have a very square athletic build naturally, so it takes not that much time for me to start going back. In terms of maintenance, I'll wear it maybe twice a week, two times a month, sometimes whenever I just think about putting it back on for like four to five hours sometimes. So no, it is not like a BBL surgery. You're just done, you good for life, you put it on for like six months, you got your waist training body, and you're good to go. In order to make sure that you're keeping the shape that you want, you're going to have to probably stay in a really tiny size. With waist trainers, because they are such high compressive things, they do start to stretch, so you probably have to go and get a new one every once in a while that's super tight the other thing that is brought up a lot of times is that waist trainers do not help you lose fat they're just a marketing ploy for weight loss oh my god I can't even emphasize how much I agree with this I know that a lot of us don't want to do cardio we are looking for the next fat weight loss pill the next lollipop that's gonna suppress our appetites and have us looking like Candace Wanapool y'all don't get this banging body that you want without putting in that work that exercise that good diet waist trainers do not affect your fat loss put a little asterisk mark next to that because there is a little side note that i have to make about that but we'll get to that in a second it's not intended for weight loss yes i hate that people are using it to, and marketing it as a fat loss thing that's not at all what it's for in person that's why in my line i only carry up to an extra large if you're any bigger than that frankly it's a waste of your time and it's very very dangerous obviously these companies are going to gladly take your money i just wanted to sell this fake dream to people and put them in a dangerous position i would carry up to a three extra large but I'm just not gonna do that because one, I don't wanna waste people's time, two, I don't wanna waste people's money, and three, I don't want anybody damaging themselves. What it can do, and why you sometimes hear it used as, you know, oh, I lost a bunch of weight from it, yada, 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 is that, once again, coming back to this compression aspect of it, it does compress your stomach, basically make you feel fuller longer. So in a way, it is an appetite suppressant. If you are somebody that struggles with overeating and binge eating, person for me I do this helps me from eating too much a lot of times I'm like an aimless snacker and when I have my waist trainer on I personally do not want to do that all the time if you're someone that has a little bit more weight on them you'll notice that you'll lose weight from it because you're not eating as much now, I get the question all the time of oh I want to put on weight because I'm trying to get thicker and is this gonna be a problem I would just say you need to just keep kind of like a log of what you know you need to be eating how much you need to be eating and just go ahead and simply graze all day long you don't want to be eating too much because once again you will play into that acid reflux you don't want to be overdoing it you'll always have to bear in mind that this is a compressive garment when it comes to your body you have to invest a lot of time so if you're trying to gain weight but keep a slim figure you want to make sure that you're eating those calories slowly throughout the day it is equally important to note that neither is waist training a magical way to lose weight as some claim but wearing a corset or cincture can reduce your appetite at meal times but they don't melt fat they simply redistribute it which i have mentioned a lot of times in my video before we get overly happily excited about oh my god it's going to redistribute all my fat so that means that i can just eat a whole bunch and all the fat that's supposed to go to my stomach is going to go downwards don't do that a waist trainer is going to be responsible for about 30 percent of your completed body the rest of it has got to be through exercise and through diet it will redistribute your fat but it's not a dump truck it's not going to it's not a bbl 
have a realistic mindset is all I'm saying. I'm just gonna start calling these myths. The next myth that there is, which they're not even so much myths because they are kind of true. Waist trainers weaken abdominal muscles. This is true, but once again, to a degree. When you're starting out, I would say for the first two or three months, you can wear it every day. I wouldn't advise that, but when I was first starting, I wore it every day like a freaking crackhead. I still have survived. I'm okay. Um, I would just say you need to really pay attention to how you're feeling. This is what somebody said. If your waist trainer is causing you pain, then loosen it. That's it. You can wear it for every day for the first three months. I am not advising that you do that, but if you go ahead and do it because y'all don't like to listen to me, I say things and it goes in one ear and out But personally, I advise spacing it out to every other day. You only, maximum, and this is in the beginning, maximum, do not wear that thing for more than seven hours. I will reach through the screen and snatch your edges. Five to seven hours, maximum. Take it off, I promise you will still get the results that you need. Some people push it to eight. I, if you go over eight, you just, you setting yourself up. And don't wear to sleep. I'm gonna write it on my forehead. Do not wear to sleep. I don't even want y'all to I make me no more telling me that y'all wore to sleep because I'm not even gonna answer you. I'm gonna open your message and leave you on red. Y'all just be stressing me like, oh my God, I just think about like, she's gonna tell me that she went to the hospital in like three weeks. Stop wearing it to sleep. Stop it. Sleep is when your body is repairing itself and you've got this tight ass garment on that is compressing you during the period that your your body is supposed to be sleeping or repairing itself take it off it's so bad for you when you start to get this weakening of the ab muscles is when you are wearing it day in and day out when you're working out you are requiring so much core strength and you've basically got this garment on that's compressing you and taking away that core strength your core cannot engage and there you go you're weakening your ab muscles waist trainers help support you and too much of that extra support takes the stress off your core muscles and can make them weaker over time so what can you do to counterbalance this ab workouts re-engage that core get it back strong any kind of ab weakening that you could have possibly have had will basically be gone because you've you're getting strong core muscles. Chiropractor Rachel Sparks, not me, not Cameron White, chiropractor Rachel Sparks says, although it may be tempting to wear a waist trainer during exercising, this time type of thinking is flawed. Chiropractor Rachel Sparks says, the more often you wear a waist trainer, the more it is going to be a source of support for your body as opposed to challenging your own muscles to keep you upright. The compression signals the back and core muscles to deactivate, which is a disaster for abdominal muscles you've worked hard to engage. The next myth that we're gonna address is waist trainers restricting airflow. It's dependent on various elements. I have never had any problem with breathing while wearing a waist trainer, I've been sitting here yelling at y'all for like 20 minutes and I'm breathing perfectly fine and I have a three extra small on right now. Once again, if my as my favorite saying, you cannot breathe and it is too tight, take it off. This is again, why I advise not wearing it while you're working out. This is a period where you are going through a lack of oxygen. You are struggling to breathe. Your muscles in are, are in hypotrophy. No, let me not try and sound smart. You're struggling to breathe. You're having a hard time. This is not the time to be wearing something that is compressing your body. I don't know where the trend came from to start wearing waist trainers while you're working out. If you're wanting to sweat more, put a sweatband on. Because that's all it's doing for you is helping you sweat. Waist training is not meant for everybody. I think we need to really understand that and, and come to that conclusion that it's just not for everyone. I don't know if you guys know who Katya Lee Henry is and who Cassie Davis is. They're both very good friends with each other. Katya will literally tell you that waist training is the biggest myth of all time. It is the, the dumbest invention ever and it blah, 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 whatever. She just hates waist trainers. And Cassie Davis swears by them. I think we can frankly say that neither one of them is lying. Follow Katya and she follows me. I don't personally know her, but not to speak bad about her or anything. I'm not saying anything like that. Um, but who knows? how Katya went about it, if she was wearing it while working out, blah, blah, any of these things. We don't know any of that stuff. I watched Cassie Davis' video on waist training and she seems to have the same kind of ideals as me. So I like Sis's mindset. I think that she's doing it correctly. Those are two very big um, fitness influencers I know that have that are friends that have completely different ideas about waist training. So yes, it is very personal and it is all dependent about how you do it. You have to see if it works for you. If it doesn't, if it's causing you back pains and you can't breathe and what Girl, sorry, you're gonna have to find another method. It's just not gonna work. Um, the other thing that I wanna address is do waist trainers move your ribs? The answer to that is yes, that's true. They do move in the bottom two floating ribs. So we have to bear in mind that the two floating ribs, if you see people that get their ribs removed, it is a approved 
cosmetic procedure those are the two ribs that they get removed we also have to bear in mind that women are meant to bear children our organs completely shift around like just somersault and everyone survives and it's perfectly okay so i would think that that would be a lot more scary than the two bottom floating ribs that basically everybody seems to think are useless they're not useless no they're really important those two moving in like i would think that's a lot less scary than your whole organs like shifting around in your insides if to you that is like the canceling i gotta go that's too much for me then that's okay waist training is dangerous but only when done to these crazy extremes that you honestly make sure that you've got the right size on, that you're doing things correctly. And once again, if you are someone that is over the size, I would say, of a 34 inch waist, you do not need to be waist training. Too much fat is just another added barrier of compression pressing in. And I hope that doesn't offend anybody. That's not my intention at all. Um, I just, I don't want to waste people's time and I don't want you guys to do something that's dangerous for yourself the common criticisms of waist training include bruised ribs acid reflux shallow breathing and back pain are most often the result of taking waist training to the extreme tightening too far too early or wearing a garment that is sized incorrectly a lot of extreme stories you see about waist training on the media are things actually being mislabeled about speaking about corsets corsets are not my cup of tea i feel like they require a lot more knowledge and a lot more safety when doing so you just see some people going crackhead with corsets and trying to get like 13 inch waist that's not normal as long as you know the difference it's pretty easy to decipher um what's a crock of cockamamie and what is not so. i hope that answered everyone's question um this is a very controversial topic i know that some people hate waist trainers and they think that they feed into these crazy beauty standards which i highly agree with you i think we also have to remember that everybody wants to look good but just realistically our standards of looking good is enforced by what's around us i think that we just need to respect everybody's decisions and choices on things and understand that a lot of times people's own struggles and battles is a personal thing and sometimes some things are triggering for people and some things aren't like personally for me when i was weight training that was extremely triggering for me and was not healthy for me and so i couldn't do it any longer but waist training doesn't do that for me i am not intending to push any kind of beauty standard on anybody and i don't want to um make anyone feel like they have to do this to feel beautiful you guys are absolutely beautiful exactly the way you are if there's anything that you want to change that is completely up to you just please make sure that you're doing it healthy and safe so that is all i have to say if you are interested in purchasing a waist trainer i do have my own line um it is located on kyshop.com i also sell workout gear and apparel and all that good stuff so if you are interested you can check it down on the link down in the description box down below but if you guys have any more questions you can leave them down there too i'm willing to fight with some people about some things well i'm not fighting i'll have a good old debate with you guys but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys next time don't forget to subscribe and go to thumbs up and check out my social media and i will see you guys later bye also i had no makeup on for this video so if i look like a pasty crab just that's why well, that was not a good kiss